everyone and welcome back to my channel and I'm wearing the same thing that I've been wearing in the last like six videos even though I'm filming these on different days give me a sec all right there we go something completely different now because I swear I own more than four items of clothing I guess I just choose to film wearing the same six items oops Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Becky and today is another installment of my Friday favorites. And this is a series I started last week and basically all I do is highlight some cool things that happen during the week. Um, they are sometimes fandom related, sometimes book related, sometimes just cool things that happened in my life or I stumbled upon that I wanted to share with you all. Um, I'm doing a slightly different setup. I'm trying to keep these more casual by having them be filmed on my bed. Um, no, just like, no, a more laid back and chilled environment for these. Let me know what you think. If you like it, I'll keep it in here. If not, we'll move them back in front of the bookshelf. So just let me know. But um, I think we're at a long enough intro, so let's go jump into this week's favorites. Um, starting with books, I only read one book this week because we're no, we're four weeks into school, but we're already talking midterms. I'm not okay with that. Um, so the one book I read this week, I don't have, so I just uh, insert a picture, and that is Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the sequel to Stalking Jack the Ripper, and I've had this book on hold in my library since like October, and it finally came in at the end of January. I did not have time to read it um, during the Winter Biennial Bibliothon when I initially planned on reading it. And I put it off and I saw that we we're getting close to having, for me to having to return it. I did not want to. So I binge listened to it in like just over two days. And it was really good. I really enjoyed this one. I loved how the story progressed. And I really liked that for this one. While elements of the story definitely were borrowed from the first book, it didn't feel like a complete rehash of Stalking Jack the Ripper. The story had its own motives. It had its own direction. It added to the overall lore of the world a little bit more. It was incredibly exciting. I also really liked how things that happened in Stalking Jack the Ripper directly affected Hunting Prince Dracula characters behaved differently they reacted differently things were addressed differently i personally really enjoyed that one of my biggest pet peeves is when something happens in a book and it's not addressed in subsequent novels um this is something i mentioned in my uh dan brown reviews that while i love his books genuinely my it irritates me that really big you know world altering events happen and no one ever talks about it. I get that he does this to make each book an individual read, but because they are intended to be a series, because they do reference the previous books, it's just a little annoying to not have that. So I really commend um, Carrie Maniscalco for allowing her world to have that continuation on there. Um, and I really personally enjoyed that. Um, moving along to movie and TV. So um, the Olympics are going on right now and I am not a sports person. So I have actually not watched anything going on with the Olympics. I know it's like a way for everyone to get together and you don't need to like sports to watch the Olympics. And so I don't get half of what Twitter's talking about right now. I'm like, oh, that's trending. That's probably related to the Olympics. I don't get it, but I'm happy or upset that this is happening, depending on which Twitter's response is like, oh, this is bad. Oh, this is good. Um, so I have not uh, experienced the Olympics at all, um, but also because it is the Olympics, several of my shows not air an episode this week, and many of the major networks are airing footage um, from the Olympics or about the Olympics. So um, I don't have much to talk about. Um, when it comes to TV shows. However, for movies, we got a teaser trailer for Descendants 3. Here's the thing. I'm not a fan of the Descendants. I, I don't hate the Descendants. Um, I've watched both movies eagerly more than once. Um, but the thing is, every time I watch it, I pick out the flaws, I criticize the overuse of auto-tuning and how it takes away from the enjoyment, I fast-forward through scenes I think are a bit cringy. But after I make peace of the fact that I might not like this Disney Channel original movie, about a week or two goes by, maybe a month, 
and I catch myself watching videos about it on YouTube and getting the urge to watch the movie again. So I do, and this cycle has been repeating since I saw the first movie. Um, don't get me wrong, I, it's not that I think it's a stupid idea. I love retellings, they are some of my favorite things. But just for some reason, this particular style, I don't know if it's because it's a musical, because it's like overly Disney. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if it's because they made the villain so cartoony and hokey instead of like, you know, the dark, scary counterparts. I don't know. Here's the thing, though. There's a show on Netflix called Ever After High, and it's one of my guilty pleasures. I watch that show so much, and it's the same thing. The children of fairy tale characters going to a high school and trying to play out their story and there's the daughter of a villain that doesn't want to be evil anymore like it's the same blasted plot but for some reason one i'm addicted to and one i'm trying to justify if i actually like it or not i don't know but we did get a teaser for the third descendants movie and i'm actually kind of intrigued i said that about the second one too and about the first one but I am really intrigued um, because of like the last big reveal of the teaser um, I want to give it away if you don't want spoilers for Descendants 3 teaser trailer I will have it linked below if you want to see it but I, I, I'm excited I thought it was fun I think it's cute like these are guilty pleasures of mine so I, I'm excited for this one I'm not gonna lie I'm low-key excited um the other thing I'm high-key excited about is I get to see Black Panther this weekend, freaking finally. Um, so as many of you know, I'm a graduate student, which means I'm broke. So I do rely on student loans to help me coast by. And for some reason this semester, they decided to take 10 years to get me my loan for the semester. And I'm finally getting it next weekend, which means I can use my little restore of money that I had for like, you know, groceries and food for Alistair I get to use that to go to the movies now because that's what responsible adults do but either way I'm super duper excited to see this movie I've seen amazing buzz for it I've dodged all the spoilers I know virtually nothing about this movie um, I purposely have only watched trailers when they were forced upon me like in like in front of a YouTube video or a show so I purposely avoided as much as I can about this movie and I am just so excited for this one. If you have seen Black Panther, let me know what you thought of it down below. And if you spoil it for me, I'll be very mad. So don't do that. Just please don't be a jerk. Like, don't do that. It's not fun. Spoilers are mean. But let me know what you thought of the movie. Um, okay, moving on to book news and cover reveals. I don't know what it was about this week, but we got all of the cover reveals this week. It was um, an amazing week for cover reveals. Um, so much so, I am going to speed through these. Also, just a quick disclaimer, many of these covers are for sequels, which means if you want to look at the Goodreads, um, potential spoilers for the first book. So, in the description, I will have all of the books. I'll also let you know what the first one is, so for some reason you don't know what anything about the first one, um, don't so you don't accidentally spoil yourself. I have to reference this to make sure I got all of them, because like I said, there was, there was a lot, so... The first one is, so Epic Reads is an imprint of HarperCollins, and on their website slash blog last week, I didn't see it till this week, so it counts, um, but on their blog last week, they did a bunch of cover reveals for fall 2018 books, and so I will go ahead and include a bunch of those. Um, I will not include everything on there because this video will get way too long, so I will link this original article down below if you want to know a little bit more. I did get a cover for Two Dark Rains by Kendar Blake. This is the third book in the One Dark Throne Quartet, and I have mixed feelings about this story. Right now, I'm not loving it as much as I wanted to. I don't hate it. I think the concept is really exciting, but I feel like with each installment, instead of getting questions and learning more about the lore or the world, I'm getting more questions. Um, a lot of things happen in One Dark Throne that I'm like, what the heck? Like, there was a reveal in the first book, and I thought it would be addressed in the second book, and it was, but not satisfactory, because the other question that we had was still not getting answered, and so... 
that was a big thing for me. The series was supposed to be a duology, but then the contract got expanded to a four book series. So I'm hoping that per like a lot of the things that were supposed to be revealed and um, addressed in the second book are now going to be addressed and explained in the subsequent novels. And I'm just hoping that they don't feel like an obnoxious expansion. I will be checking out these books. Also, the covers are absolutely stunning. This cover is no different. I'm hoping that issues I had with the first two books are resolved in later stories, if that makes sense. All right, the next cover is for the sequel of Before She Ignites, and this is As She Ascends. And both these books are by Jody Meadows. We got Before She Ignites in our Owl Crate box, and ours was an exclusive edition. So the standard edition has the silver on it, and our exclusive edition had this gold on it. And really interestingly, the standard edition of the sequel also has the gold on it. So I am really excited. I think these two complement each other. I think they look really nice. And while I have not read the story yet, I am a sucker for dragons. I love me fantasy. So I am really excited to see how the story continues. Another one that I am really excited about is that we finally have a cover for The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. This is the sequel slash spinoff slash companion to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, both of course by Mackenzie Lee. I personally love The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. This book, the writing itself is comedic on its surface, but the inflections added with the audio narration just brought it to a new level. I normally don't laugh that much when I read. I might get like a snicker here and there, maybe like, you no know, smiling to myself. This book had me legitimately laughing out loud though, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and because of that, I am so excited for the sequel. This one is following Monty's sister Felicity as she returns to England with the goal in mind of pursuing a life and a career that's not exactly what a lady is supposed to be doing. Um, I don't want to talk too much about that because it was kind of a ish reveal in um, the first one, but yeah, I'm excited for this one. All right, the next one is this gorgeous cover for All the Wandering Light by Heather Fawcett. This is the sequel to Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. We got Even the Darkest Stars in a fairy loot box. I think it was the September box. And I am personally extremely excited to read this one. I purposely saved reading this book because I was expecting some semblance of winter and we had it for like a week here and at that time I was in a reading slump so I did not read the book so I will probably be reading it like when it gets a little cold or something um but I'm really excited all I know is that that cover is gorgeous this cover is even prettier and the last one is such a stunning cover and this is the cover for The Cursed Sea and this is the sequel to The Glass Spare both by Lauren de Stefano. The Glass Bear was an Owl Crate book for, I believe, September. And I read it. I really enjoyed it. It's an interesting take on the King Midas story, but instead of turning people to gold, our main character turns people into gemstones. And the ending did on a really interesting, not quite cliffhanger, but conundrum for lack of a better word. So I'm super excited to see how that one continues. We also got a cover and a title for the sequel to The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. I really enjoyed The Last Magician. I have a full review of it, um, a five minute video review and a full gushy spoilery review if you are interested. We finally have a cover for the sequel. So um, the cover looks like this and the title is The Devil's Thief. And I love how these two look side by side. I cannot wait to see it in person because the in-person edition is just, there's so many details and colors that don't really pick up on camera. And so I am so excited to get my hands on this one unfortunately have to wait until october and the last bit of book news because like i said we got a slew of cover reveals we also got for me some of the best news i've gotten in a long time tour publishing announced that we are getting like four more wayward children books book number four has a title and it is in an absent dream and this one follows one of the characters from the first story, but we get to know their origin. And I'm not gonna tell you who the character is in case you haven't read the first one or in case you don't want to know. But this is very similar to what Down Among the Six and Bones did, how it followed um, character and gave an origin story before they went to the house. That's what this one's going to be doing. And I am really excited because this is a character I really want to know more about to see how their story 
happened and how everything progressed and ended up to where it was in every harder doorway so i'm super excited we are getting in an absent dream january 8th 2019 the fifth book that they have confirmed for us is called come tumbling down and that is all we know about it with the exception that it's going to be published in 2020 so we know about two more and then there are um i think two other ones on the way so i think they've confirmed so far eight books in the series which is so exciting um i've said this i know other people have said this with the way the world is set up this is one of those stories that can literally be 30 books long and i will read every one of them and be excited and i don't think that it will be dead because there are so many characters so many interesting worlds that were introduced so it'll be really cool to have origin stories and sequel stories and spin-off stories and i don't think it will get old um for example the three books that we have we have the first book that introduces us to everything which is every heart a doorway we then have down among the six and bones which is an origin story to a couple of the characters that occurred in the first book and then we have beneath the sugar sky which directly follows every hard doorway and it is a direct sequel to that one while introducing new characters and new worlds and so basically with every installment we can either follow a character learn their origin story follow the character after the events of a previous story or be introduced to someone new altogether and i am so excited about all of those i am obsessed with these books also, these are short novellas. Each book is under 200 pages, so they're really fast reads, they're really quick stories, and they're just fun if you love fantasy and other worlds and all this other good stuff. And I am so excited. Words cannot express how excited I actually am. Tor probably made my month with that announcement alone. First, February sub boxes came in. Owlcrane and Fairy Loot both were amazing. I have full unboxings of those already up. So if you would like to watch them, they'll be up in the cards and or linked down below based off of how many I have left. I'm also doing a readathon this weekend. I'm doing a 24 hour readathon. So expect a vlog for that. You'll probably see that like early next week. And there's two YouTube videos I saw this week that I want to shout out because they just kind of made my week. Um, they're both instantly Harry Potter related, which was not intentional when I made this video, but I still recommend them. Um, the first one, Lily C. Reads is currently reading the Harry Potter series for the first time and got to read book three and recently uploaded that video and I thought it was hilarious. Just listening to like her theories and piecing everything together is just making my life right now. So I will have all three of those linked down below if you are interested. I will actually be doing a similar thing. I have not marathoned the series in an embarrassingly long time so I will be rereading and vlogging that if you are interested. Um, that's going to be coming probably in April but we'll see. Then we also got a video from Sailor J and it's a how to be blank and it's each of the four Hogwarts houses. I haven't seen the other three but I saw the how to be a Ravenclaw and I was dying. It was so funny. Um, I was sharing it with some friends. I'm like I feel a bit exposed and a bit attacked and I'm kind of living for it. It is so hilarious. I cannot wait to watch the ones for the other houses. So um, again, I'll have that video linked down below. It was absolutely hilarious. Highly recommended. Those are all of the favorites I have for you this week. Oh, I lied. I lied. There's one more favorite. You all got me the very first time this has happened to me, and I'm really excited about it. And it's it's just like a little milestone accomplishment that I'm really excited. I had a video that hit 100 views in 24 hours. This is the first time that has happened to me. So I'm really excited about that. And it's a little feat. I know people have this happen all the time, but I'm still a small channel. I have less than 200 subscribers. So to have a video of mine hit over 100 views in less than a day when my average views on videos is around 20 to 40 views, that was a really big accomplishment for me. So thank you all so much for watching me, you know, taking time out of your life just to watch me talk to a camera about things. It really means a lot. So thank you all. But um, that's all I have for you for this week's favorites. So um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you like the series, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss, miss out on future Friday favorites. And um, I think that's all I have for you today. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.